Hi, this is Paul Kreutz, and welcome to Halloween DIY and How To. In this edition, I am going to show you how to create haunting special effects by using a fabric scrim. With it, you can create the illusion of levitating candles, vanishing ghost brides, and even eerie skeletons that appear with each lightning flash. How is it done? Well, I'm going to show you how, so let's get started. Here are some of the items that you will need to create these special effects. But first, let's take a quick look at what fabric scrims are and how they can be used. Most of us are familiar with the stretching room in this iconic dark ride attraction. In it, what appears to be a solid ceiling disappears in a lightning flash, revealing the attic space above. That's because the ceiling is actually a woven fabric scrim with ceiling details carefully painted on one side. With the stretching room dimly lit and the attic area above the scrim pitch black, you only see the surface of the scrim. When simultaneously the room lights go out and the attic is illuminated, you are then able to see through the scrim and into the attic. A scrim can also be used to give objects an ethereal look. Here is the graveyard portion of that same dark ride with the lights on. You can see the massive scrim that hangs the entire length of the graveyard set. All the animatronic ghosts are behind the scrim and when properly lit, the scrim gives those animatronic figures a ghostly gauzy appearance. Now, we are going to achieve both of these effects with the scrim material that I will be using, which, by the way, is just ordinary, easy to find, inexpensive weed cloth. Here is the brand that I used, which I picked up at my local hardware store. Whatever brand you use, make sure it has all three of these attributes in order to achieve the best results. One, make sure it is black in color. Two, make sure at least one side is matte or has a very low sheen to it. And three, look for a material comprised of a series of small, evenly spaced holes as opposed to a heavy woven material. Hanging the weed cloth on an adjustable tension rod may come in handy when positioning the weed cloth. Dark colored push pins will also help to hold it in place. Along with the weed cloth scrim, you will need your main figure or object. It can be large or small, animated, or just static, like this plastic skeleton, easily brought to life with a tattered old shirt and a small fan. Next, you will need a controlled light source. Any number of things can be used, such as a strobe, flashing light bulbs, or devices that create lightning effects. I use this specialty sound box that comes complete with the Thunder and Lightning sound effects CD. When the CD is played next to the adjustable sensor, any electrical light or lights plugged into the box will flicker and flash, perfectly synchronized with the Thunder and Lightning sounds. To demonstrate how to use this grim, I'll be creating a spooky framed picture using this ordinary cardboard box. With it, I can either create a dark void effect by painting the interior flat black or add a background. Either way works and I will show you the end results of both. Next, I will add my figure into that box and carefully light it. In this case, I'm using a battery operated string of LED lights with lightning and sound effects, perfect for a small scale object. I place the lights on the two front sides of the box and then carefully hide them from view by using two pieces of black foam core board as baffles, like this. The weed cloth scrim is then placed over the opening and finished off by placing a picture frame over the cloth. Make sure that you carefully hang the cloth scrim with even tension in order to avoid any wrinkles. You will want the scrim to have a smooth, undetectable surface. Then you just dim the exterior lights and turn on your interior lighting effects for some simple but highly effective special effects magic. For my large scale set, I used a pre-existing hallway, 
turning it into a black void by hanging weed cloth on all the walls and at the back, making sure that no light was coming in from the end of the hallway. When I placed my figure towards the back of the hallway, I lit it with this simple light stand created by clamping lights onto an adjustable camera tripod or microphone stand. I hid the light stand from view by placing it in a small room, just off the hallway. When I placed the figure closer to the scrim, I used the same light stand but hid the lights from view using black baffles. Then I plugged my lights into the light box to create the lightning effects. Using push pins to secure the end of the weed cloth roll above the doorway, I then simply rolled it down using the weight of the remaining roll to hold it in place and to give it just enough tension to create a smooth, wrinkle-free surface. This also allowed me to roll the weed cloth back up when I needed to access the hallway to make the necessary adjustments to the figures, lighting effects, and baffles. The edges of the weed cloth were hidden by hanging two old drapery panels on either side of the doorway. After adding the rest of the set pieces, I dimly lit my set, being careful not to shed light directly onto the weed cloth. Lighting indirectly and not directly at the scrim will help keep the scrim nearly undetectable. Regardless if you've created a frightening picture, a creepy crypt, a scary doorway, window, or even a long dark hallway, it's time to dim the lights and turn on the special effects. <laughs>